This is the second video in the thermal physics topic. In this video, we're going to be looking at kinetic theory and the ideal gas. This lecture is going to cover sections from your textbook, Fundamentals of Physics by Halliday, Resnick and Walker. It will cover sections 19.1 to 19.4. Last lecture, you were introduced to the zeroth law of thermodynamics that said if body A was in thermal equilibrium with body C and body B was also in thermal equilibrium with body C, then bodies A and B were in thermal equilibrium with each other. And anything which is at in thermal equilibrium with anything else is at the same temperature as that body. You saw that heat always flows from a warmer body to a cooler one. You were introduced to the idea of absolute zero which in classical physics is where all motion stops, though other effects start to happen there in reality. You were also introduced to the formula, the approximation, for how the length of a body changes as it's heated. So the change in length of the body is equal to alpha, which is the thermal expansion coefficient, times the initial length, times the change in temperature. And then we saw how the volume of a solid changed. So we saw that the change in volume was three times this linear expansion coefficient times the initial volume times the change in temperature. Or for something like a liquid, rather than having a linear thermal expansion coefficient, we have a volume thermal expansion coefficient, which is given the symbol beta. And the change in volume is given by beta times the initial volume times the change in temperature. Now, a concept that you need to be aware of is the moles concept. The amount of gas expressed in moles is equal to the mass of the sample divided by the molar mass for that sample. So the molar mass will depend on what molecules are making up our sample. In one mole of a material, there are Na, Avogadro's number of particles. So that's 6.022 times 10 to the 23. We can find out the atomic masses or molar masses off the periodic table. It's presented as a little number underneath each of the elements. If you come across a problem in the homework set or in the quizzes, you will need to use the periodic table to look up the atomic mass and use that to get the molar mass. In an exam, you'd be told the molar mass or the atomic mass. There are a few atoms that are always found as diatomic molecules in the atmosphere and around us on Earth. There's seven of them, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. You should try and remember that these ones are always found diatomic, so two molecules, two atoms joined together, and so the molecular mass is double the atomic mass. 